According to my research and the latest news, we still don't have automated laundry machines, which means that you and I are still stuck doing our laundry day in, day out, week in, week out. And even though we kind of are in a laundry groove, you and I, there are things that can still drive us collectively nuts about laundry. And every now and then at Clean My Space, we go through our older laundry videos, we look at comments, and we find the laundry conundrums that you are faced with. So in this video, we have picked out five of the most annoying laundry problems that the Clean My Space Nation is experiencing and we're gonna show you how to solve them. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you can always be in the know about a new Clean My Space video and give this video a big old juicy thumbs up if you think that Elon Musk and all of his smart friends should start putting some time and effort and resources into laundry robots. I chose to wear this shirt for two reasons today. First of all, the color is fabulous. But second of all, if you look up close, you'll start to see some pilling. There are some signs of wear on this t-shirt. And let me explain to you why that's happening. If you notice that there's pilling on your clothes, it could mean that you're mixing fabric weights. Now we've been trained for a long time to separate our colors when we're doing laundry, lights, colors, darks. But one thing we're not taught is to separate fabric weights. Think about it like this. If something light, like a cotton t-shirt, is washed with something really heavy, like a terry towel, when those two garments are together in the washing machine, they're spinning around, doing their thing, getting clean, but the terry towel is rubbing vigorously against this light cotton t-shirt just trying to live its life and do its thing and when i pull those two out of the wash what happens the towel looks fab and the t-shirt looks a little worse for wear so if you notice that this is happening to you not only on cotton garments but anything that has a synthetic blend or even is a full-on synthetic like acrylic notorious for balling or getting pilly what you want to do is separate out your fabric weights so Typically, you would want to wash your clothes in your loads, however you choose to organize those. Then you want to wash your linens all together, and then you would want to wash your towels and washcloths separately. If you notice that your dryer is just not doing its thing, I mean, its job, you have one job, it's to dry clothes, and your clothes are coming out still damp, there could be a problem, and I'm gonna tell you how to diagnose it. The first thing you wanna do is check your lint trap. Now, I tell you all the time to empty your lint, tra lint trap. I do it, it's like a habitual thing for me. Chad never does it, so <laughs> there's always that push-pull in our house, but it's something I know I stay on top of. That said, if you're someone who is forgetful about that lint trap, you wanna make sure that you check it and make sure that it is empty. Not only is it a fire slash safety hazard, but it is also something that will prevent airflow, meaning your clothes won't get as dry as you would like them to be. The second place to check is the second vent. That would be the vent that either vents out to the top of your building or the back of your home. So typically you'll have a dryer and then you'll have a dryer hose, which kind of looks like a silvery elephant trunk, and that will attach to something that vents outside. That lint trap could be dirty. So you wanna check that one as well. Now, if you live in a building, you might have to talk to a superintendent about that, but I'll leave that one to you. The third thing that could be an issue is that there could be a block in that venting tube. Now, I don't have the technical term for it, so I'm gonna go with silver elephant trunk, but I think you're picking up what I'm putting down. In the event that that's an issue, yes, you can DIY, you can clean it yourself. If it's something that you're not comfortable with, definitely bring in a professional. They will know how to fix it, and it will solve your dryer woes. Something we've heard from a lot of you is, I don't have a washing machine in my home, so I have to go to a laundromat and I don't want to bring three loads of laundry with me. I just want to do one big load. Other people say, I don't want to wash separate loads. I kind of want to do one load at home to be more energy and water conservative. And some of you will say, well, what am I supposed to do if I have a garment with a stain on it? I stain, you know, pre-treat it, but then what am I supposed to do? Wait a week until I do my laundry? For all of you, I have a solution. 
I used to be in a situation where, you know, Riley would come home from school and she would have a couple of stained garments and then I would sort of feel the same way. I'd say, okay, what am I supposed to do? Wait a week until I wash these colors. But now what I've done instead is I can find a few little garments, no matter what color they are, lights, darks, or colors, and throw that load in the washing machine. Normally this would be a problem, but I've been using Carbona Color Grabber. They're these microfiber sheets that you just throw in with your load that grab and lock loose dyes to shield laundry from dye transfer, which prevents color runs. So you can keep your new clothes looking newer, longer, all while saving time. If you want to avoid color bleeding, and frankly, who wouldn't, then I dare you to give these a try. I've been using them for months, and seriously, I swear by them. Another thing that really irks the Clean My Space Nation is static cling. And this is actually a super solvable problem. Now in my world, I don't like using dryer sheets. I don't like the feeling of the residue. I don't like the smell that emanates from a dryer sheet. So I just eliminate them. And I actually find them kind of superfluous because there are so many other ways that we can deal with static cling. Way or method number one is to use a dryer ball, whether you want to use wool, which is great for natural fabrics like cotton, or if you want to use the plastic dryer balls that look like little hedgehogs, those are the ones that I tend to use because they're really good for mixed loads. You can even do some DIY ones, we've made videos on that before. Uh, no matter what, as long as you have a few of those bouncing around, it'll help to break up the clothing and beat out that static cling. If you don't want to use dryer balls, I've got another easy tip for you. This, of course, assumes your dryer works. You want to dry your clothes until they are damp dry. So maybe about 10 minutes away from being dry. Stop the load, pull out the garments, give them a quick snap or shake, and hang them to dry. While this might seem like a little bit of extra work, you're actually killing two birds with one stone. First of all, by doing that, there won't be any static cling. And second of all, you won't have to worry about your clothing wrinkling, especially if you leave it overnight. And you know, if you left that load in the dryer, everything would sit down and in the morning, you would, you would kind of take that load out and it would be all wrinkly from sitting overnight. So this solves that problem. And the third thing you could do is you could dry your garments at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. So there you go, three easy ways to get rid of static cling. Not only is this an issue for you, this is something that I get text messages about from family and friends. A stinky washing machine. I'm gonna tell you that a washing machine, you should sort of think about like your body after a shower. You wouldn't just step out of the shower and not towel yourself down, would you? No, that would be ridiculous. So your washing machine kind of has to be treated the same way. You want to towel down the inside. So what I recommend is taking a good plush microfiber cloth, giving the drum a quick wipe down, and then going inside that gasket, that rubber lip, and giving that a wipe down, as well as wiping down the inner door. This might seem like an extra step. I know you're busy. I know you got things to do. But if a stinky washing machine grosses you out and scares you, this is all you have to do. It's like, imagine that thing just had a wet bath for 45 minutes and dirty stuff was spinning around in there and it did its best to drain it all out. But there might still be some stuff left behind. And if moisture is left in a damp space, it'll definitely find a way to get stinky. So by doing this quick towel up, you're gonna save yourself a lot of heartache. Number two, you gotta make sure you leave that door open. I've talked about this a lot. It is a simple and easy thing to do. So, and actually what's funny is I am very uh, meticulous about leaving the door open on the washing machine, but sometimes it drives Chad crazy. So he closes the door just by habit and then I'll have to go and open it. It's like this silent marriage issue that we have. <laughs> The washing machine and dryer really do cause a lot of marital issue, I, I suppose, in our house. The third thing you want to make sure you're doing is keeping that detergent tray up and open at all times. So when you're not using your machine, I know this is kind of like a new piece of news, but that detergent cup holds detergent. Bacteria loves soap. So if it's in a damp, dark space, it's closed, that is where you're going to get a lot of bacteria and odors. And I challenge you, like if you pull yours out right now, you might see that there's caked on stuff. It might be smelly. There might be mold. Don't blame me. I'm just, I'm just giving you the advice. And finally, consider using a product to maintain washer freshness. 
So for instance, Carbona washing machine cleaner with activated charcoal attracts and binds odor causing residues. This is a super simple way to maintain your machine. You know what I always say, let the product do the work for you. And by the way, a clean load of laundry starts with a clean washing machine. A special thank you to our friends at Carbona for sponsoring this video. You guys know that I am all about using the right product for the task at hand. Well, alongside the color grabber you saw me using in this video, Carbona has a complete line of stain removers designed specifically to handle virtually any stain situation in your home. Visit Carbona.com to conquer your stain the Carbona way. And that brings me to this week's comment question, and I have two. I cannot pick one, so I'm just gonna throw them both out there. The first one is what is your biggest laundry pain in the backside? Let me know in the comments because if I haven't figured it out already or solved it for you publicly, I will do my best to do that in an upcoming video. And my second question is if you could have a robot do something for you in your home, whether it was doing laundry or scrubbing the toilet or tucking your kid in at night, whatever that robot could do, tell me in the comments down below. Because maybe these tech titans will start reading these comments and start solving some of our problems. If you wanna see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can follow along on Instagram. I am at Melissa Maker. Chad is at the Chad Reynolds. The two of us are at Clean My Space. A great way to support the Clean My Space channel is to just watch another video right after this one. And here are a couple that I think you might love. If you wanna learn more about Makers Clean Microfiber Cloths, you can click this button right over here. And there is a button down there that lets me know you care. So click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.